Hello and welcome. If you have a Bernina sewing machine, you may want to remove the hook and the bobbin case from the machine. You might be clearing a jam or you just maybe want to get in and do some cleaning and oiling. And the best way to do that, I'll demonstrate this on this 810B. This will apply to many, many models of Bernina. Bernina have been using this system for many years. I won't show you anything about removing jams at this stage, I really just want to concentrate on the removal of the hook and the bobbin case. Uh, but the first thing to do is to unplug the machine. Remove the power plug here. Uh, two reasons. One is you don't want to be accidentally stepping on the foot controller while you do this, because that could ruin your day. And the other reason is um, we'll be tipping the machine back just to get a better view, and you don't want that levering against this plug. And potentially breaking anything so just remove that plug there and th there's a couple of ways um, this can be done so you know the first thing to do really is to make sure your needles up out of the work if you've got fabric in here that's if you can if the machine's jammed this might be a little bit more difficult but I'll, I'll go through unjamming in another video but anyway get your needle right out of the work there raise your presser foot and take your presser foot off it's really just for clarity you don't have to do that but just for clarity there's a couple of ways you can do this you can remove this top lid here but if you if you don't want to go to the trouble of doing that you may want to tip the machine back just for better clarity there as well so I'm just going to prop something under the machine there that screwdriver will do in the meantime there okay and if we get in at a low angle here we can see the bobbin uh, cover front door there and open the door and here we have the the bobbin case and the hook in behind here there's a retainer ring and a clamp with a, a little latched lever here so first thing to do is remove your bobbin case just like so and if we have a look around in here you'll see a little latch and that's what you want to push back to the left so I'm pushing to the left there and that allows this here so this is the retainer here retainer ring to swing down and out of the way and now we can just simply pull the hook straight out the hook here is sometimes known as a shuttle okay and then you'll see in here this is what's sometimes called the basket. This is the area where the, the hook lives in here. And you can see if we turn the machine, you'll see the driver here is oscillating. So this is what they call an oscillating hook machine. So that just oscillates back and forward like that. So now what you want to do is you want to get in there and do you know your cleaning what can be also a handy thing to do is to remove um, the top lid here just by pushing this lever here to the left and that will free this top lid just remove that and that way you can get in and you know do some cleaning you can get in there with a pair of tweezers and have a wee clean get any of that sort of lint and whatnot out of there from between the feed dogs there yeah, so you really just want to get rid of any lint and dust from around this area. Just a, a soft brush, anything that's a little bit stubborn. You could use a pair of tweezers, just be very gentle, um, not to, you know, use any force anywhere. Get in there and have a wee, a wee clean. You can clean the retaining ring there. Just remove any dust, really. That's the, the key, dust and lint. And then when you're ready to um, reinstall the hook you can while you're there you can use this opportunity to do some lubrication and what you can do just a small amount of oil on the hook there and give that a a wipe with your finger you don't want too much oil in this area because it will uh, the, the thread actually runs around this area passes over this these surfaces here so you know too much oil will stain and contaminate your thread only temporarily 
you can run the machine on a scrap piece of fabric to get rid of any excess oil that might be there and also a small amount of oil on the shaft there you can see I've got oil on my hands there you can just literally sort of just lightly coat it really so turn the machine until that crescent shaped driver is at the bottom position and then you can sit the hook which opposes the driver so you've got the driver crescent shape here and then the hook crescent shape over the top so we've got the driver on the bottom hook crescent shape on top so when you're placing this in this end of the driver here goes into this area here on the hook and the left side of the driver here sits on this area here so the crescent shape comes in and you literally just sit it in like that once that's sitting in like that you can bring up your retaining ring you can see if I push the ring itself it doesn't latch into position now what's actually latching here is this little uh, shaft here if we take a close look at this shaft and its latching mechanism you'll see if I push in on the retaining plate here that I'm pushing quite hard too by the way click it push it until it clicks like that you do have to push reasonably hard here you know it's you don't want that sitting so that it can just pop out again you want to make sure that this latch actually latches onto that pin properly generally you'll hear a little click you can test that everything's in order just by turning the machine over and that should turn nice and smoothly okay I haven't removed the needle by the way it, that's probably a good idea is to remove the needle uh, but in this case there's no jams or anything so leaving the needle in is fine and so there should be no clicking noises it should be nice and smooth to turn no binding that's it really and once you've got to that point you can you know reinstall your bobbin and bobbin case as you normally would I won't bother threading that at this stage you can put your top cover on latch that back into position and just close the front door there now if you wanted to oil the hook area without removing it you can easily do so just open the front door here what you can do is you can turn the machine until the hook oscillates back in the anti-clockwise direction I'll just get a closer view here so you'll see you'll see the hook there coming to its full clockwise position and then we turn the machine and it goes back in its anti-clockwise direction here and you can see now it's actually exposing the race and the race is the part that you want to oil just get your oil bottle and just one little tiny drop of oil really it's all that's needed on that race there and you'll see that when we turn the machine further the hook comes down and now it's picking up oil and lubricating the entire race there so that that oil point there is quite important I would be tempted to oil that probably every four or eight hours of sewing I guess I mean that's subjective really you, it, it doesn't um, that's not a hard and fast rule but I'll put it this way I'd, put, I'd rather put too much oil in there than not enough the only problem with putting too much in there is you could potentially uh, contaminate the thread if your machine starts to make a bit of noise sounds a little bit grindy a little bit rough maybe that's a good place to try it's just a little drop of oil there and then you go ahead and um, you know install your presser foot thread up and do some test sewing just make sure um, that your thread is not being contaminated by oil before you go ahead and start sewing on your project so I hope you found that uh, helpful and thank you very much for watching